The actual designation is administered by the county, I think it is, and they uh, recognize a century farm when it's been in continuous operation by one family lineage for over 100 years. And we just last year celebrated our 125th anniversary on Anderson Farms here. It affects every decision we make in our operation in terms of protecting and preserving that legacy that's been laid before us. And not only to uh, protect what's been handed down to us, but to pass it on to the next generation. That's what drives me in, in the farming operation. kind of a moisture test to see. See, it's not fully saturated yet because it still kind of falls apart. It doesn't turn into a slime ball when you do that. That's something we look at. That's just using your, I mean, they make fancy soil moisture probes and telemetry and all that, but this is uh, as good as it gets. In order to keep the farm going, you have to embrace the change. You have to adapt to technology, and sometimes that comes at a price. It isn't always cheapest to do that, but to embrace the change, and change is good, and to always be evolving, and always trying to stay on the cutting edge. When I was a kid, we drove open station tractors, and the markers came down on the planter to tell you where to drive next. Now we push a button on the computer, and the tractor steers itself from one end of the field to the other. When we first got auto steer in the tractors, uh, my dad would still put the marker out on the planter and be driving all day long with auto steer with the marker just in case that auto steer wasn't accurate. After a while they'd start leaving the marker up but still when you did the headland pass they would leave the marker down. After a while we got used to that and now we took the markers off of all the planters. So that was only yeah, 15 years ago that uh, we didn't even have auto steer. I learned to keep plant straight rows you had to just look over that hood ornament all day long and keep it nice and straight. Now we will literally stop the operation if you don't have to. So I mean that's in a very literal sense how, how much has changed. That we've not only embraced technology but we literally wouldn't go without it. We will literally stop the tractor in its tracks if the GPS loses signal. As the tractors are making applications across the field or sprayer or combine, whatever it is, all of their uh, data that they're generating is uploaded to the cloud almost real time, within two minutes time. And I can sit in the office and look at the corn yield map that a combine is producing while the combine is still in the field. So we could know what the corn is yielding instantaneously back to the office. Same with planting or spraying maps or any of that. It's all uploaded uh, wirelessly, almost real time. It makes it easier to make decisions. It makes it more timely uh, to get, uh, get that data back in and analyze. To run a farming operation in this day and age, or any business for that matter, you need to be paired up with good business partners, call it, or vendors or whatever, you know, so find good people to work with and just stick with them. And there's some loyalty and trust that goes along with it, and then it's a two-way street after that, you know, it, it, uh, what you put into that relationship, you always get back out of it. The employees that need to work on farms now don't need to know how to shovel corn, they need to know how to run a touchscreen computer, you know, a young kid that can adapt to technology is almost more valuable than a guy that knows how to overhaul an engine. And that's the case, very much so. They say that the, what the world's demand for food has to double in the next 50 years again. So one example is corn hybrids, varieties of seed corn used to be around 10 or 15 years. Everybody knew the certain variety. And the genetics of the plants are evolving so fast that a variety that may be cutting edge this year is old news two years from now. So it's just uh, that continuous evolution and not just for plant genetics of animals and everything along those lines, it, uh, it's changing fast and it uh, takes a lot to keep up with, put it that way. Along with our production practices, the things that we're doing uh, in terms of efficiencies, uh, swath control for example on a sprayer, how we use that much less chemical now than we used to, or the irrigation changes and using less water to grow more crops. So all aspects of it has uh, really uh, gone leaps and bounds from where it was just 10 years ago. In order to preserve the farming legacy that we have, go on to 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th generation here, which I'd sure love to see happen, we need to stay in that top third and keep evolving, keep adopting the new technology and the new ways of doing things. We want to get more efficient and use less resources to grow more crops or more food for more people. So. 
that's the bottom line and uh, and be good stewards of the land and animals along the way.